Welcome to Audit the Audit, where we sort out the who and what and the right and wrong of police interactions. This episode covers disorderly conduct, constitutional rights, and constitutional awareness, and is brought to us by Don'tComply.com's channel. Be sure to check out the description below and give them the credit that they deserve. Sometime around June 25th, 2013, blogger and Second Amendment activist Zach Horton, who writes under the pseudonym Murdoch Pizzgotti, was planning to open carry his long rifle through his neighborhood in Little Elm, Texas. Mr. Horton contacted the Little Elm Police Department to inform them that he would be exercising his Second Amendment rights in case they received any calls about his activity. Soon after placing the call, Sergeant John Samples and Officer Christopher Nordman came to Mr. Horton's residence to discuss his plans. Hey, afternoon. How Sergeant you doing? Sergeant Samples, Police Department. Hey, good to meet you. Mr. Horton. How yes. You? All right. How you doing today? I'm doing well. How about you? Excellent. What's going on today, buddy? Oh, we're just doing a normal uh, Second Amendment exercise. We're going to walk around the neighborhood with, uh, with my rifle slung over my back, pointed down with a uh, chamber flag in, in the chamber. What are we? Uh, what are we attempting to achieve here? Uh, we're uh, helping to uh, show the uh, the general public that it's a perfectly legal activity in the state of Texas to open carry long guns. And you think that your display is going to achieve that? Uh, it's it definitely will. Who's this because it, uh, that's my wife. Okay. So at the time that people that that may uh, not understand that it's a legal activity call into, you know, say they moved here from New York and they come and. Uh, call the uh, 911 and they get a dispatcher and says hey there's a guy walking with a gun I got you you know wouldn't this the simple dialogue be um, w wouldn't the dialogue be you know uh, well is he wielding around is he is he threatening anyone with it no no he's not okay well that's perfectly legal in Texas uh, if you want to call in about that maybe call the non-emergency number or something in that matter you lived in the community I'm sorry how long have you lived in the community uh, we've been here a couple of years okay. hey puppy dog right. well as you know Good afternoon, ma'am. Hi. Come on, girls. Well, as you know, our What's community is uh, one of the safer communities in the North Texas. Well, uh, also been raided. Oh, yeah. Texas, right. also Go been inside. Raided as, Go inside. Uh, as the safest in Texas with a population over 25,000. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, so hold on, hold on, hold on. It, it, what, I, what I'm trying to say is we don't, we didn't achieve that by everybody showing their guns, walking around the streets in order to do that uh -huh. okay and I don't believe that you doing that uh -huh. is, is gonna is gonna achieve that in the first uh, month that we lived here our house was broken into and yeah, uh, the, the one the, that took the report yeah the back door got kicked wide it wide open and uh, right. you know so it's not the safest neighborhood in, in my eyes because I've been a victim of, of those crimes and uh, you know if, if more people were walking around displaying their uh, their Second Amendment rights to uh, to open carry long guns, then maybe there wouldn't be little hoodlums okay. walking around. I believe Officer Nordman has already explained the disorderly conduct law. Okay. Now, yeah, now, are you going to uh, say that that I calculated to cause alarm by walking with it slung to my back in a proper? Or giving you, or giving you for a warning mm -hmm. that it's going to calculate, or it's going to cause an alarm. Section 23 of the Texas State Constitution's Bill of Rights upholds the Second Amendment right to bear arms, but also empowers the legislature of Texas to regulate how citizens may exercise that right. Texas has several laws specifically pertaining to the use and carrying of firearms, including laws that prohibit guns in certain areas and dictate how they may be displayed in others. The law that the Little Elm officers are referring to is Texas Penal Code 42.01, which is Texas's disorderly conduct statute. Subsection 8 of that code states that a person commits an offense if he intentionally or knowingly displays a firearm or other deadly weapon in a public place in a manner calculated to alarm. The officers are hinging their argument on the idea that any display of a firearm may cause alarm. And because Mr. Horton was warned beforehand that he would alarm citizens, his actions would be considered calculated. The higher courts of Texas have addressed this issue in the past, and we will discuss that aspect of this interaction in a moment. But it is important to highlight the officer assertions and acknowledge that there are certain circumstances where displaying a firearm is illegal in the state of Texas. Okay, and I, I guarantee you we're going to get about a hundred calls. Uh huh. And then okay. I yeah. And, and listen to me, you're a law-abiding citizen. I respect Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Okay. I'm sure. a law-abiding citizen, or else I want to be in the position that I am. Right. Okay. I love guns. I've got my own collection. Mm -hmm. I don't see that it's fit for me to be walking around my own neighborhood showing guns. I would understand if and you were in Afghanistan. Yeah. It's and a different story. And that's an opinion. 
Right, and it's my opinion, and that's what we're having here. It's just right. an, uh, a, an opinionated talk between us. Okay. okay. Two men, two uh -huh. grown men. Okay. Right. Who both have the exact same rights. Absolutely. Okay. I chose to live in this community because I feel it's a safe community. Right. I have my family here, and as I, well as you. And I feel that well we're exemplifying that safety and those rights by going out and properly um, open carrying our, our long guns and, you know, right. walking through the right. neighborhoods. But I'm sure you've heard the saying before, just because you can doesn't necessarily mean you should. Does that make sense? I mean, I don't see Does why not. Sense to you? I don't see why we, okay, why so, we should. So just because you can use the N-word, should you be going mm -hmm. around town blasting it? left and right well I guess I could you could it's a first okay. amendment but sure. is it really in good taste to do it I don't see how the uh, law I don't think so I don't personally. see how the law enforcement of this town has anything to do with taste I think it should rely well, on believe it or not a on, lot of it has to do with taste on how we present ourselves to people uh -huh. how we treat people sure you know okay we, we can be like New York officers and be cruel and corrupt and ugly to the citizens but we're not we choose not yeah, to be absolutely all right so we're here to serve you guys okay all right you want to practice your second amendment right mm -hmm. by all means go ahead Great. Okay. So, but as soon as you, you come within the confines mm -hmm. of a law that you violate, mm -hmm. you're going to go to jail. Right. Okay. And I don't want it to get to that point. But since That's I'm, I'm here talking but since I am not calculating uh, to cause alarm in another person, I'm carrying it in the most un uh, aggressive manner possible to be carrying a gun. I will have it slung to my back, pointed down, not no hands on it, completely hands free. I don't see how that can be uh, calculated on my part. As to cause an alarm. You honestly don't think that it's going to cause an alarm. You don't think it's going to? I mean, that's okay. A, that's a okay. Thing. If I have a right to open carry my gun, I'm asking you a How do I do it without? Just answer me. Answer my question. Mm -hmm. please. You don't think that that's going to cause an alarm? As mentioned earlier, the crux of Sergeant Samples' argument is that displaying a firearm inherently causes alarm. And because Mr. Horton has been informed of that, then displaying a firearm in public would be considered a calculated means to cause alarm, thus violating Code 42.01. Texas courts first addressed the notion of calculating to cause alarm with a firearm in the 1906 Texas Supreme Court case of King v. Brown, where the court concluded that the discharge of firearms in a public road did amount to a calculated attempt to cause alarm. Alarm. Before concealed carry laws were established in Texas, the court addressed the issue of causing alarm once again in the 1910 Texas Court of Appeals case of Jones v. State, and held that, quote, no person, unless he be a peace officer, not even the owner of the premises, can go into a social gathering and carry on or about his person a pistol. In the Jones case, the court held that open carrying a pistol by any means is considered a calculated cause of alarm, because carrying a pistol was patently illegal. The Texas Court of Appeals addressed the issue again in the 1973 case of Sparkman v. People's National Bank and held that the defendant was guilty of calculating to cause alarm when he used his shotgun to frighten patrons of a foreclosure sale that he was attempting to stop. The most relevant case in regards to this interaction came in 2008 when the Texas Court of Appeals held that, quote, the mere fact that the police were called is not evidence of the way in which the gun was displayed, in the case of Grieve v. State. This ruling essentially nullifies the sergeant's entire sentiment and solidifies the notion that the manner in which a weapon is displayed is the primary factor for determining whether it was calculated to cause alarm. Mr. Horton is well within his rights to open carry a rifle in public so long as he does not carry it in a manner which would suggest that he is a threat to the public at large. And Texas courts have upheld this right many times in the past. I don't, I don't think in a well-educated public that it, it will cause an alarm. You think our and public I don't th educated? And I don't think it should cause an alarm. You obviously don't think our public's educated because you're saying that you're wanting to educate We are helping together. to educate them. So we've got yes. an uneducated public through, through what you've said. So that's going to cause an alarm, sir. Being in the presence of an uneducated public does not dissolve the rights guaranteed to all citizens under both the Texas Constitution and the Constitution of the United States, and it is important to explore the implications of the sergeant's philosophy. The idea that because a group of people are unaware of the civil liberties established in the Constitution renders them non-existent implies that those unalienable rights are conditional and subject to the whims of unlearned individuals. In 2017, the Constitutional Convention published a poll showing that four Four in ten Americans could not name a single right protected under the First Amendment, and that 33% of Americans were unable to name a single branch of the U.S. government. It stands to reason that these startling statistics suggest that a majority of Americans are largely uninformed about their rights and their government as a whole, and by Sergeant Samples' logic, that would imply that no Americans are entitled to exercising their rights. The Sergeant's ad populum assertions are contrary to the elementary principles of individual liberty, and this motive 
conservative thinking opens the door to the Orwellian ideologies that the Bill of Rights was designed to combat. Well, the, I'm just the, saying. the issue is this. I have the right to open carry a long gun. What manner in your eyes is not calculated to cause an alarm? What do you mean carry? No, what do you mean put well, myself and, in No, no, I'm asking what is the way to do it? I wouldn't do it. So you're saying right. that it's not legal? No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying. Well, you're saying you're saying if I if I do something well, that's illegal, to put words in my I will mouth, I'll hold be on, arrested. Hold on, Mr. Horton. Come on, okay. let's keep this civil, okay? <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, but you're I'm just talking in circles of, around the, the no. issue that I'm going to be arrested for disorderly conduct for doing something that is legal. Mr. Horton and Sergeant Samples continue their banter for several minutes, and the officers eventually agree to disagree and leave the scene without further incident. Following the interaction, Mr. Horton posted on his blog site that he went on to exercise his rights against the advice of the sergeant and did not encounter any officers while doing so. Mr. Horton went on to meet with Chief Waylon Rhodes of the Little Elm Police Department, who assured Mr. Horton that he would educate his officers and personnel about the open carry laws in Texas and work with Mr. Horton to establish programs to better inform the public of these rights. Overall, Sergeant Samples and Officer Nordman get a C, because although they displayed a fundamental misunderstanding of constitutional rights, nothing the officers did was outside the bounds of their authority. And making consensual contact with a citizen to express the concerns of members of the public is not unlawful. It is clear that the sergeant believed that he was operating in the better interest of his community, but his flawed logic and ignorance of the most basic principles of the Constitution effectively abrogated his intentions. In Forcing the will of a certain group of people at the expense of an individual's constitutionally protected liberty has the potential to systematically dismantle the authority of the Constitution and craft a society where citizens are governed by uninformed emotional outrage rather than an objective rule of law. Arbitrarily enforcing laws out of context only serves to normalize pseudo-democratic behavior and is contrary to foundational tenets that the United States was built upon. I sincerely hope that the officers have learned from their mistakes and gained a deep deeper understanding of the Constitution and the rights that it protects. Mr. Horton gets an A+, for engaging with the officers in a civil dialogue, refusing to surrender to the sergeant's flawed logic, and following up this encounter by orchestrating a productive meeting with Chief Rhodes. Mr. Horton's constitutional awareness served him well during this encounter, and he was able to navigate the conversation with confidence despite the mental gymnastics of the officers. Reaching out to Chief Rhodes in an effort to establish educational programs for his community is admirable, and I appreciate Mr. Horton's dedication to spreading constitutional awareness. Mr. Horton deserves acknowledgement for having the courage to exercise his rights even after being discouraged by the officers and threatened with arrest. I commend Mr. Horton for insisting that his rights be respected, and doing so in a way that was both peaceful and constructive. Let us know if there is an interaction or legal topic you would like us to discuss in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more police interaction content.